Joining me now is John Stierheisen, leader of South Africa's Democratic Alliance Party. John, great to have you on the show. Really appreciate it. A lot for us to, to talk about. First of all, let me ask you what we, you know, we were discussing in the last 20 minutes also with our David McKenzie, our correspondent. Why do you think, John, that the ANC is voting against this report? What does that tell you? What does that suggest, perhaps? Well, it suggests that, once again, Parliament and the ANC's parliamentary majority are being used to protect a sitting president who is facing very, very serious allegations. I'm sure you'll remember this is not the first time this has happened. We had it with Mr. Jacob Zuma, the former president, who Mr. Ramaphosa ousted on a wave of fighting corruption and maladministration, who himself used his parliamentary majority to shield himself from accountability um, from Parliament. So this is not new territory. It's Mr. Ramaphosa adopting the very same tactics that were used by his predecessor for almost a decade to protect himself from any form of accountability or oversight. So given what you've just outlined for us, John, I mean, what can your party, the Democratic Alliance, do here? I mean, because you don't have, I believe, the votes in Parliament to force any action against Mr. Ramaphosa, or am I wrong? Uh, well, no, but it remains to see whether Mr. Ramaphosa's party itself remains united on this matter. You may recall that there are various factions within the governing party, uh, most notably the Zuma faction, who commonly called the Radical Economic Transformation Faction, and whether, in fact, they, whether they will hold the line tomorrow on voting, given the fact that they've been so vocal that Mr. Ramaphosa should meet the same fate that he has dished out to some of his political opponents, in other words, having to step aside, uh, whether they hold the line tomorrow. Uh, either way, I think it would be an indictment on Parliament if the report does not go ahead. Bear in mind, this is not an impeachment vote. It is a vote merely for the report that has made a prima facie case that Mr. Ramaphosa has a case to answer would need to go now to a full parliamentary inquiry where he would be given a further opportunity to explain himself. But most importantly, parliament would be able to exercise oversight over him. But didn't we hear about two hours ago from the ANC basically saying that they will vote against forming an impeach impeachment community? I mean, you, you're a committee. You're, you're, you're hinting that there are uh, differing voices, different factions within the ANC, and perhaps those factions will uh, make themselves, will reveal themselves in, in the days ahead, you think? There'll be some fraction, some, some, uh, you think, within the party? Correct. Mr. Ramaphosa is about two weeks out from an internal ANC elective conference that has become a very heated battle between him and the RET, Radical Economic Transformation Factions. He's got two candidates standing against him for the presidency of his party. And I've no doubt that there's going to be a lot of posturing during this vote mm. um, by those camps, uh, go, especially going into the ANC's elective conference uh, but later in December. Can I ask you, John, I mean, what do you make of the story? The, the scandal in itself is it, pretty bizarre. Correct. I mean, and it's completely improbable. Even the president's own accounts as well show that he has violated exchange control regulations and has abused his office of state to pursue, uh, use state resources to pursue uh, a theft of money that accrued to one of his businesses. Uh, I think it's improbable. The story is that on Christmas Day, somebody pitched up on the president's farm with a whole lot of dollars, wanting to buy 20 buffalo. Mm -hmm. They paid in dollars. Um, they've never collected those buffalo. They still remain on the farm today. The money was stolen. The president waited almost a month to report the theft. Uh, it really does point to the fact that the, this money hidden under a couch in the president's private quarters on his farm um, has a far more, I believe, smellier uh, trail than the president's letting on. And that's precisely why we must have a parliamentary inquiry, because we'll be able to get to the bottom then of mm -hmm. these particular stories. So you don't see any logical reasoning or explanation here, John, for, for the hundreds of thousands of dollars being hidden in his sofa and his couch? It doesn't make any sense, uh, any sense uh, to us. I mean, it's it's millions of dollars that uh, yeah. that were in the, allegedly in the couch, and it makes no sense at all. Big game transactions are very seldom carried out in cash. South Africa's exchange control regulations are very strict. You may not be 
in possession of foreign currency for a few days after you've received it. The president on his own papers admits that he became aware of the dollars on the 26th of December. Uh, and we know that it remained in his private residence in a sofa till at least the 9th of February the following year where it was stolen. So even on the president's own accounts, he has a case to answer, which is why the impeachment process should proceed. There is, though, isn't there, an element, John, of irony in this story? Because, of course, President Ramaphosa, as many of our viewers around the world would know, uh, you know, his, his political image, I think it's fair to say, and his rise to his presidency was built on fighting corruption. So what does this potentially do? Well, I think it completely shatters now his platform of cleaning up and cleaning out. And it really has been um, his clarion call across South Africa. I think this fatally wounds the prospects of him being seen now as somebody who's able to, because every time he moves against a government official, a corrupt colleague, they're going to throw this report back in his face and say, but hang on a second, you're wanting me to stop doing the following, but you were doing the same thing on your farm. It places him in a completely untenable situation, which is precisely why we've called for an early election. We think it's time for the people of South Africa to decide what's going to happen going forward, not a 200-member ANC caucus or a 4,000-member National Executive Committee uh, going forward to decide the future. The people of South Africa must now decide where things go from here. And what you're saying is that in many ways this calls into question the integrity and the morality of the ANC. Uh, wh wh where, where did minority parties stand on this? I mean, what do they want to see? What can they do? Well, the majority of the opposition parties are united in the fact that the report needs to move to the next phase. So we've had the independent panel making its findings and their recommendations. Those then need to go to the National Assembly, where a committee will be formed to interrogate those articles of impeachment and decide whether the president has a case to answer and, if he is guilty, whether that warrants impeachment. The president will also then be given an opportunity to come before the committee and provide a more fulsome ex explanation, we would hope. But he's handled this thing so badly from the beginning. And much like the parallels being drawn between President Ramaphosa and President Nixon, it's more the cover-up and the subterfuge that I think is damaging in this case. Had the president come out right from the get-go yeah. and made an honest account about why the money was there, the South African electorate are very forgiving, usually, in these in these things. I think that people find the cover-up to be the more distasteful element of this particular sorry saga. Uh, very forgiving, uh, John, but I believe they've also got bigger battles at home, don't they? Electricity, cost of living crisis, jobliness crisis. Uh, is this something that is reverberating with South Africans? Does this matter to them? Yes, it does matter to them, because I think a lot of them are starting to realise the intrinsic link between government corruption and failure and service delivery failure. We're sitting with rolling blackouts, sometimes up to 18 hours a day. We're sitting with a massive crime problem. We have a 42% unemployment rate. We have the highest youth unemployment rate in the world. And we have a cost of living crisis that's spiraling out of control, which means that 80% of South African families uh, cannot meet all the nutritional requirements to feed their families. These are the big pressing issues. And this is the other concern, that with Mr. Ramaphosa now trying to tough it out, is he going to spend, like Richard Nixon did, months and months and months uh, focusing on his political survival and taking his attention off these key crises that South Africa needs their president and the government to be grappling with, to be able to, to resolve them? The president's eyes are not going to be on the ball, his head is not going to be in the game. And that's why one of the other reasons we're saying, let's have an early election. Let the people decide on how we're going to move forward. John Steenheisen, leader of the South Africa's Democratic Alliance. Thanks very much, John. Appreciate it. Thank you.